This week on the Computer Chronicles, creativity software. We'll show you a program that can actually teach you how to draw and a terrific piece of software for creating music, even if you don't know anything about composition. For all you digital photography fans, this is the new version of Adobe Photo Deluxe. It can turn your snapshots into prize winners. And if you're into 3D, this is a virtual art gallery that you can create on your own PC. Plus, my pick of the week, two creativity programs that let you choreograph a dance or write a story. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com, with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb, for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video, with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. It's kind of ironic that computers, which started out as number crunchers, spreadsheet engines, have evolved into creative tools for doing things like art, dance, and music. We're going to start our look at creativity software with an amazing computer program that can actually teach you how to draw. It's called Art Dabbler, and you are our artist of the moment. John, welcome. Hi. Uh, I guess, first of all, it sort of comes with a tutor built into the software, doesn't it? That's right. Uh, Waller Foster is very famous for their art uh, tutorials. If you go in any art store, you'll find a whole rack of those. We've taken a couple of those and actually put them into so our So how, how does the, the tutor part work? Okay, basically you just select something, for example. So suppose I want to learn how to draw bodies, sure. cartoon bodies. We'll select that and let's take shapes. Uh -huh. And it'll, each one of these are little modules that go through exactly how uh, the cartoonist will do some of these different All right, so here's a whole little lesson and I just watch it and I get the basics. Right. All right, so let's skip past that. Okay. Say, now I want to actually try to do this myself. Okay. What, what do I do? Okay, basically you can use the tools that we have built in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and use tracing paper and the simple lowly pencil here. All right. So I'm going to do just as they have. I'm going to start by just drawing very basic shapes. One of the things I always try to explain to people, you know, when you're doing the introductory drawing. It's uh, kind of loose and sloppy. Keep it very loose and sloppy. Many people kind of keep their hand overly right. tight. So basically the lesson would have told you, hey, just take these little cylinders and keep on drawing them clicking them all together, that's right. what the body's so made of. You can of. see I'm basically kind of using these little sausages just to build a, a, a simple right. body shape. Now you said tracing paper. What's that? Okay, tracing paper is just like the real thing. I can turn this on. I'm going to go up one sheet, and I'm going to turn tracing paper on. Well, so you can draw on. on top of what you just exactly. did. Exactly. I'm now on another sheet of paper, okay. but I can see through to my okay. rough drawing. And why do you do this? That's so I can use this now as kind of a guide, and I've switched to a pen, a more final kind of tool. And now I'm going to start actually drawing uh, using the underlying framework. Okay. And once again, th that looseness that you use up front is now translated here into kind of a, a framework upon which I can actually right. lay my art. And then you would get art. rid of that paper underneath and you'd have just that right. final it, sketch on top. I can top. turn this on and off. You can see how I'm already starting sure. to get a much more kind of finished rendition. Now suppose you want to add texture to it, you know, or, or shade it or something. Okay, the next thing I would do is use a tool, uh, in this case like an airbrush. This is where I can go in and start to mm -hmm. add shadowing, highlight. Uh, if I want to add color, you know, a piece of chalk maybe. Uh, give me some blue jeans here. Not too bad. So, so all of the traditional tools are basically there that you'd normally associate now, with. Now one nice feature in this, you have something called, I think, session playback in which you can yes. actually recreate the process so you sort of learn by really seeing what it took to create a finished drawing. Right. I'm going to play a drawing that I did earlier. And basically what this does is take the drawing work that I did at an earlier point. So this is an actual drawing you did before. Mm -hmm. And you could record the whole process of creation as sure. to what it took to get there. There's a couple of ways you can use this. One is it can be instructional, because uh -huh. sometimes you'll see how an artist constructed a drawing sure. much differently than you might expect right, from a final right. drawing. Secondly, I think for a lot of people, the opportunity to not only show your friends a finished drawing, but hey, watch how I did it. You've got to have a movie of the process. Exactly. Now, let's talk about photo clone, another cool feature in which if you're really an idiot when it comes to drawing, you can work with a photograph, right? Right. I've got one in here. Let's go ahead. We'll get rid of our okay. earlier drawing. This is a photograph I took in uh, Paris a few years ago on the underground. All right. And basically what I want to do is take it from that photographic uh, point of view and make it more of a, a, a rendered drawing. So there's a couple things I could do. As we did earlier, I've got tracing paper here. So, so you can actually draw on top of the... Sure. Okay. So if I, if I were to start to go in here and want to use this as a source for a drawing or painting or whatever mm -hmm. I want to do, I can use it that way. Is that cheating? I mean, would you recommend that? 
I think any tool you can use to learn how to okay. draw is, right. is appropriate. Tracing paper certainly is one right. I use. So Now, actually, you can though take this and sort of put it in autopilot, right, and become kind of computer artist, not with the brush, but with the software? That's right. Painter has the, or Art Dabbler, excuse me, has the ability, yeah. in this case, to take uh, any one of these tools. And let's take one of the artist brushes here. There's one called the Pointillism uh, brush. What this actually does is allow me to start to uh, lay on what would be uh, the equivalent of uh, kind of a pointillism kind of drawing. So I'm going to go in here, play auto clone. So kind of automated artist here. Exactly. So you see what it's doing? It's doing almost like I'm doing sure, hundreds sure, of little sure. dabs or marks here. And then at this point, I could go back in and take a, a tool and start to add my own marks to it, which is what I like to do. So I'm sort of letting the computer right. do the, the first part of the work, but then I might want to go in here and start to, you know, kind of add right. some of my own handwork. You ought to have a touchpad, I guess, right? Uh, it will work with a mouse, but to be honest, to really get the feel of traditional tools. But all the other artist materials are kind of sitting in the computer. You don't have to have anything else. That's right. You'll I mean never run ink, out of paper. The brushes, the pens. You won't get chalk on your hands. You'll never run out of paper. How much does it cost? And it's 49 Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's well known that math and music have a lot in common. There's an underlying logic and symmetry to both of them, so it's not surprising that computers have become an essential creative tool in music, even for musical dummies. And I guess, Ennis, that's the idea behind uh, music maker, even people who don't know anything about music can grab a bunch of samples, mix them together, and create something that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you don't need to play an instrument. You just need a computer. All right, let's <laughs> try it. All right, so what do we have right now? You've set up, what, an eight-track piece of music we're going to lay down? Yeah, we can actually choose up to 32 okay. tracks, like in a recording studio. Sure. Um, we start with eight. So these are really four tracks in their stereo, so that's our eight tracks. Yeah. So here on the left, we see a list of different music styles, mm -hmm. like acid jazz, drum and bass, speed garage. Right, so suppose I want to create a piece of acid jazz music. So I click on acid jazz, and I get a list of instruments. So that's going to determine appropriate instrument, instruments, appropriate samples for that genre. Yeah. Okay. The program actually comes with lots of samples, pre-recorded samples, mm -hmm. that I can use to make my music. All right, likewise. Suppose I want to lay down a bass line, first of all. So I click all my bass files through and so find the one them, I like. So you listen to them, decide the one you like, and say, okay, let's do it. And then and you want to just drag and drop it. Drag and drop. So there's our there's bass line. Track. It's very easy. Okay. And I go take drums, for example. So put down a drum line on the next two tracks. This one, for example, I just can extend a little uh -huh. bit. Take so you're actually one. Say, taking a different dr drum yeah, riff for the little next little chunks twist. there. What does each of those segments represent? Is that a bar or amount of time or what? It's a bar, okay. yeah. Okay. And how about a melody so now? To get some melody, get for example, horn. Let's see. I like that. All right. Let's try. So, and I have three instruments now, and just to show you how it sounds. Not too bad. It's kind of cool already. All right. Now, uh, can you add a vocal to this? I mean, I see you have a microphone yeah. here. Can you sing? Yeah. It? Are you a singer? <laughs> I'm not. Well, try it anyhow. But I show you how to okay. do it. So here's a recording button, and I get a recording window, uh -huh. and I can record voice, instrument, singing, whatever. Okay. I hit record. Oh, yeah. So let's see how it sounds. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. And I click OK and it goes right into So you just my drop track. your voice down now in that in that next set of tracks. Yeah. And oh yeah. All right. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I'm going to uh, delete that now again to show you something else. Okay, well, let's talk about the video part. So you can create lots of music, but you can actually do your own music videos at the same time, right? Because you also have a library of, like, wild-looking video clips. Yeah, we have a second CD in the program. Uh -huh. So I have to change the CD right now. All right. And again, we would just pick a piece of video or pick a piece of artwork and lay it down in another track as if it were a piece of music? Yeah, it works in the same way. All right. On the second CD are lots of video files. Yeah, I can choose dance files, real files, virtual files. All right, let's so let's look at the them. virtual ones. So these are different ABI clips. All right, that's a cool one. Which one do you like? You can pick which one you like. So here's one with the roller coaster. Okay. And I just drag and, and drop again. Okay. And then I play it back together. And there in the bottom right is our finished piece of music video, huh? Yeah. And I can even film something as a camcorder, load it into the computer, and use that for Okay, so I can take shots of you dancing or something, drop them in there, and that would be yeah. the piece of video that goes with exactly. it. Exactly. All right, now, suppose, how much, uh, how many samples and pieces of video comes with basic yeah, About 1,000 sound files and about 600 video files. All right, now, files. I see you have sort of add-ons you can get. So if you're into, like, techno, you buy this sort of add-on with all the techno tracks, huh? 
Yeah, or, or we there have are house, all kinds of music styles. Hip hop kind of stuff. And oh, which is more video stuff? Yeah, so you have more video files and you just never get tired of the program because you can do so much things. All right, so music for dummies, huh? <laughs> all right, how much does it cost? It's 40 bucks. That's $40. great. Thank you very much. All right, well, computers are not only becoming a tool for creating works of art, they are becoming part of the art itself. One good example is the kinetic sculpture of Alan Rath. Enter a room filled with sculptures by Alan Rath, and you will be faced with machines that sometimes look like machines and sometimes not. You may feel as though you are the one being watched, but in spite of some human qualities, the robotic artwork is not humanoid. Alan doesn't try to hide the electronics or the mechanism that makes it work. In the robots, what I was going after was uh, staying away from a literal anthropomorph anthropomorphic form, but going to anthropomorphic behavior. I mean, movements that seem very human, even though the forms that are doing them only seem, you know, slightly human. But I wanted to get that subtlety of movement and that interaction is the most important thing. The interaction between the parts is what suggests the back and forth between humans. The strangely affecting mechanisms that make up Alan's art begin life in his studio in Oakland, California. At first glance, it looks like an engineer's workshop, and in a way it is, because artful engineering is at the core of his work. There's just uh, a whole lot of different systems that need to simultaneously uh, come together in, say, a large mechanical piece where there's power conversion, electrical power conversion types of things, and then there's communications, and there's you know, the network part, there's the computer part, all the software, there's the uh, motor driver parts. So there's these different circuit blocks, circuit elements that need to be done. Technology is both the means and the subject of Alan's work. To Alan, a circuit has its own kind of beauty. It reminds me of setting up tracks to roll marbles down. You're, you're just trying to get these electrons all to go in the right place at the right time, but you have millions of them and you're trying to do it in millionths of a second accuracy. And, uh, so there's just the fun of getting all those electrons to go in the right place. And then um, then you want to do something, you know, but that circuit has to do something useful to uh, enable the sculpture to exist and do whatever it does. Alan's favorite sculpture of this century is NASA's lunar lander, and he also admires satellites. While the concept of a beautiful machine may bend some people's idea of art, Alan is confident of his goals. You know, I'm trying to make machines that are themselves. You know, I'm not using the machine to make a static object at the end and present that as the residue of my process. The the machine is the object in the end. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. One form of creativity that has swept the world over the past few years is digital photography. But taking the pictures is only part of the creative process. It's what you do with the photos afterwards that can turn your work into art. And I guess that's why you get something like Photo Deluxe from Adobe. That's right. All right, so we get all these digital photos, and most of us aren't professional photographers, and we want to make them better. Right. So how do you do that with something like Photo Deluxe? Well, let's see. The first thing we want to do is bring our photo into the computer, and we help you do that with Photo Deluxe. Um, you see here, I've set up a gallery. We also help you organize your photos in Photo Deluxe. Okay. So I have a gallery here of my most recent vacation photos. So we just drag in a picture. You just drag and drop. It's as easy as that. And immediately we see some problems. Yes, so absolutely. So first thing is to fix problems, I That's guess. That's right. So you'll see we've got lots of quick fixes you can do in this panel here. Right, we've got, we got the red eye. I see that We've right got away. red eye. The first thing we'll want to do, though, is just do an overall touch-up of the photo. So what I'm applying an instant fix. What it does is look for the colors in the photo and makes them more it's vibrant. A, okay, general cleanup job. General okay. cleanup. But now I want to get rid of those red dots and the poor kids' eyes. That's right. 
Dylan is notorious for red eye. So the first thing we want to do is just drag a rectangle around Dylan's I'll eyes. Say, hey, in that section, get rid of the red That's dots, right. right, and you'll see in just two steps, it removes the red oh, eye, keeping all the natural highlights in the eye. So now we have a much better photo of Dylan, but there are still some problems. This yeah, photo cropping right away, because most people have wide shots and a lot of junk you don't really want in the picture, Absolutely, right? they take it easy from to too solve. far away. Very easy to solve. And again, this is one of the advantages of going digital. So you'll see here that I just have this box that I can drag around, keeping mm -hmm. just the area of the photo I, that and I that's want. That's the photo I should have taken in the first place. That's right, because really all we want is the photo of right. Dylan. So who needs those zoom lenses, right? That's right. All right, now we're talking. Now, what can I do with this? Suppose I want to create something fun with the photo. Well, you can have lots of fun here. We've got templates like greeting cards and calendars. Uh -huh. I'm going to create a creature trading card. Um, this is a fun activity for Halloween. It's a big thing Halloween. now. The kids make like trading cards out of That's themselves, right. right? And they bring them to school, and then they want to share them. Okay. So you can do that very easily here. Um, we have hundreds of different templates and clip art and stock photography that you can use to make your photo look better. Mm -hmm. Provide some context to your photo. Again, this is one of the advantages of having a digital photo. Right. You can put it in a template. And All right, so I've got this whole little library of backgrounds and stuff I can play with. That's right. And we've got one here. That's right. So, so I can just drop them in? Absolutely. You see, again, we just walk you through the steps, making it very easy to know what to do. Because most novice photographers, they don't, they're not, there they might is. not be that creative. So what we do is we put a creative framework work around what you can Let do. Let me ask you quickly about the clip art, because you have a really cool feature where you can customize it so you don't have that same boring clip art that everybody yes, else has. Yes, we do. We found that people have tons of clip art, but they don't use it, and it's because it looks like everyone else's mm -hmm. clip art. So let me go ahead and grab this monster and add this to the creature trading card. Again, it's just drag and drop. And what's fun about this clip art is you can change it to make it look the way you want it. You can add a shadow. Uh -huh. You can change the expression of this monster. So I mean, any one piece of art, it's a collection of art, That's really. That's right. It's a collection of art. It. You can change the style. All right, so let's pick one and then just, so we can drop it in that card That's now? That's right. So you see now that it's on the card. Of course, I don't want it covering Dylan, so I can move it around. Let me just enlarge this so I can show you what I'm doing a little better. I can rotate it. And then when I'm done, um, I can go ahead and change the text, because of course, this isn't Winnie. This is Dylan. All right. And now we have a really the cute... The trading card. That's right. Real quick, I want you to go to one other tool, which is really a high-end thing you've brought in here, which is the clone tool, which okay. people really love. Could you show us how to do I that? I sure can, Stuart. Let me grab this photo of my friend Carol and John, who were on vacation with us. Okay. And when we got back from vacation, Carol told me she had a little tiff with John. <laughs> she wants and to get John out of the picture? That's right. She wanted John out. Literally and Yes, and figuratively. <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab the clone tool. And again, we teach you how to do that. We remove an element. Because this is one of the most um, requested things that users want to do is remove something so out of a It's a really photo. nice picture of Carol, but John's history. That's right. <laughs> Everyone has an ex-boyfriend or someone that they want to remove from the photo. <laughs> so let's get John out of the picture very quickly here. So you basically you cloned the wall texture and you're replacing That's John right. with a wall. I'm sampling Which is not from a bad idea probably given the way that relationship <laughs> went. <laughs> That's right. And I have to say this is just for demo purposes <laughs> only. Carol and John are doing just fine. Oh, okay. So you see here that if I grab a smaller tool, I can go in and paint around and really do a good job um, doing this very quickly. Yeah. But you get the idea. So if you were to look away and look back, you probably wouldn't know that John was That's ever right. in this picture. And you can be real artsy and actually take pieces of her and clone That's her, too, right. if you really want to Now be that creative. you've learned how to use the tool, you can grab the clone tool and you can have fun with it. That's neat. You can make many carols. And you know Photo what? <laughs> this is one of John's worst <laughs> nightmares at this point. All right. It's Photo Deluxe. And we don't have time, but you can output the T-shirts and... And Absolutely. cards and all kinds of stuff. You can do all kinds of things with all photos. Right, Lonnie, thank you very much. Sure. Well, the trouble with digital photos is they are digital. Many people have a problem figuring out how to show or share their photographic works of art. The internet is one way, but the computer is providing totally new environments for displaying your creativity. And I guess that was your idea, Yakov. You've invented this sort of 3D photo gallery in which I can show my photos as if I were an artist and ran my own art museum, right? Absolutely correct. Now, how do we start? So this is like a blank gallery here to begin with? Sure. Let's begin as a blank gallery, and we'll start to put first picture here. It's very easy. You change, you choose the picture you want to put. So I have my images here, and I just drag and drop them into you the You can drag it from the camera as well immediately. Okay. And images here. You can come close and see. And you can add another image to another place. And All right, so let's just drop in uh, one or two others just sure. to see what this might look like. So these are, you know, family photos you might have taken, and this is a cool way to, to show them off to the relatives and so on, right? Now, can you move these photos around and drag and drop them sure. and change the layout of, Absolutely the, of the, right. the room? It's very easy. Uh-huh. Oh, now you're even putting her photo on the walls. 
Now, let me ask you that. Actually, you can design the room itself, right? Decide what kind of Absolutely. room this looks like. How do you do that? The uh, product has uh, several pre-built styles, and you can build your styles yourself. So you double-click on the one of the styles you choose. It, uh, it's applied, and you can apply uh, it to okay. all the room, or only one. So you room. can pick a style for the particular museum or gallery you're putting together. And it's okay. If you want to design your own style, you can save it just it. as is. Let's walk into the next room for a minute and start again. Now, suppose in this room I, I, I take uh, pictures of flowers. I'm big on flowers. I want to create a flower uh, exhibit in this room. You choose several of them together, mm -hmm. and you put it all immediately on the so wall. I can just grab a bunch of pictures at right. once, and the program automatically scatters them around mm -hmm. uh, inside this particular room, and it's now the flower room. Now, it's a little bit boring. All the frames are exactly the same shape. Can I change the Absolutely. aspect ratio? Absolutely. You okay. can change. You can reposition them. You can put it anywhere in the wall. And world. I can say, hey, I don't want those two white flowers next to each other. I want the red one in between, or I can easily sure. juggle those things. You can even bring it forward if you want. Right. Okay, now you have a lot of other effects you can add to your flows. For instance, you can make a scrolling. It's like you can moving. actually have the, the, the painting move, or the picture move inside the frame like that. Uh-huh. Wow, so it's sort of a multimedia gallery now. Now, uh, suppose I want to title this room like a real gallery and say, hey, this is the flower room. How do I do that? Sure. The question is, first of all, you want to put the title. It's very easy. Oh, you double okay, so you have it here open. and put the name, flowers. Mm -hmm. You change the color, and it's done, you have it. Now, the amazing thing, show how you can actually walk through this room like you're playing a Quake or a Doom game. Actually you can get walk behind around. the pictures and, and really walk around as if this were sure. a real space. Yeah, you can do the same what you're doing in any game, but it's your personal con uh, customizable environment. All right, I want you to show me another example. This is sort of fun, what you might do with your home photos and pictures. Is a sort of commercial application in which you can put together a kind of 3D uh, business presentation, right, using this engine? Absolutely right. You can put business presentation. You can put the TV guide inside, and uh -huh. I will demonstrate you the part of the TV guide. Or component. say a virtual trade show kind of thing you could put together. Absolutely right. All right, so, what are, so we're loading up another room that you've already pre-prepared. Sure. And this would be, let's, let's see, if I'm, okay. It's so this is maybe a, a virtual TV trade show uh, I might put on the web or want to put on somebody's hard drive? Absolutely right. And you can connect it to the website or connect to any application. So even we're in to the, the Disney real room, for example, and yeah. then you go next door, we're in the Fox room. And you go to ESPN room. Yeah, this is like, like a really mega PowerPoint presentation. Of what sure, absolutely doing, right. right. And you can, again, add if you want to scroll this. Uh -huh. Advertisement is going here, like in the movie. Now, also, any one of these pictures can be a hot link to a website, right? Absolutely right. So we could just click on a picture, and that would take me to whatever the the ESPN website or the Bulls website or yes, whatever. Yes, you connect it by the putting world by web component, and you are going to the website directly from this multimedia right. gallery. And I can actually could I put this gallery up on the web too? Is that possible? Yes, absolutely correct. All right. Yeah. Final thing, you've now got something where you can actually put movies inside absolutely these right. frames. This is the newest development. And it's, I believe you will be excited to see this. Okay. So again, we start with a blank room, and you just decide to fill it in with something you've put together ahead of time. So you're just going to grab an AVI file and drop it into one of your frames. Absolutely. So basically, uh, you're putting together a gallery of movies hanging on the absolutely walls right. instead of still pictures. Right, absolutely correct. And now wow. you can drag and drop this movie the same way you did it with pictures. Huh. Wow. You have environment. We believe that it will be Dynamite. added to the TV. 3D photo gallery? Yes, yeah, 3D Yaka. TV. TV, thank you very much. That's our look at creativity software. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. We covered several creative endeavors in this program, but there are two other areas where you can have a lot of fun and get a lot of help from some excellent software. Let's start with dance in a program called Dance Studio. This is just a fun program that lets you create a dance video. You pick the music style, choose a dancer, pick a setting, do the lighting design, even pick the camera angles for your video, and then you actually tell your dancer what steps to do. Your keyboard turns into a command center for directing the choreography. And if you don't like what you've done, you can go into the editor and modify the dance in the same way you would edit a video clip. Dance Studio also comes bundled with Mixman, so you can even do an original mix of the music for your video. 
The other program I wanted to mention is a fascinating word processor for writers called Writer's Blocks. What this program does is help you organize your ideas, whether for a screenplay or for a speech, by putting separate thoughts or story ideas into separate blocks. The software then lets you manipulate the blocks to organize your story in the most effective or dramatic way. It's kind of like having piles of index cards on your desk, only with writer's blocks you can do it all inside your word processor and automatically save the story sequence that you like. So that was Dance Studio for Meta Creations and Writer's Blocks from Ashley Software. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back here again next week, of course, with the latest in software, hardware, and the Internet. I hope we'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, the secrets of email. We'll show you how to protect yourself from the biggest email scourge, spam. Are you having problems opening up email attachments? There is a very simple software solution. Want to have fun with email? We'll show you how to add animation and sound effects. And for the ultimate in email, video mail, with this package called Create and Share. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.